at some point in life, we're all going to struggle. We're going to be confronted with something. There's going to be some obstacles um, that we feel that, you know, we can't over overcome. Or when you're on your path to success, there's always going to be those roadblocks here and there. It, it's just, it's a part of life. Um, and I think that's what's so rewarding when we do uh, achieve what we achieve is because of those failures, because of those struggles, because of those roadblocks. Athletes that have achieved an amount of success, I think when their doubt creeps in or there's naysayers or there's doubters, I think the, the best thing that I ever did, I ever did, obviously I think was believe in myself. Uh, that's first and foremost. Uh, those roadblocks can come in different forms. It can be on mental roadblocks. It could be outside criticism. It could be media. It could be anything. It could be personal problems. It could be family problems. Uh, I mean, anything can trigger you and to try to get you off track. Those are struggles. I think an athlete, again, to get to where you want to be and the process in which it takes to get there, you have to be addicted. I saw and I listened to what the coach said and they saw in me, which was uh, a lot of potential and I just wanted to build on that but at the end of the day we're all going to struggle I struggled but I didn't quit and that's what I encourage a lot of people to do just don't quit you know it's not how you start it's how you finish and so for me that mindset of just not wanting to quit not wanting to succumb to the ebbs and flow of the game and uh, you know disappointment uh, having short-term memory um, nobody's perfect. You're going to have those days. Some days you're going to have it. Some days you, you're not. And it's the great ones that look beyond that mistake and just have short term memory and go to the next day. You know, go to the next play as if the bad play just didn't happen. Um, that's where you have a small percentage of, of, of great athletes in every sport. You have your average, you have your good, and you have your great. When you talk about the GOAT, are you talking about the greatest of all time? I may not be considered the GOAT in some people's eyes, but if you look at me and you look at my highlight, I definitely fit the description. If I didn't have the, the, the coaches that pushed me, um, pushed me beyond really kind of, I think, my own limits or my own expectations, I don't think that I would have become uh, the receiver that I became. Um, I don't think I would have been this guy that became T.O. Um, obviously, like I said, when you talk about uh, physically, I fit the description um, of, of, of an athlete. I fit the description of one of those physically uh, imposing receivers, uh, I guess, became a poster child for prototypical receivers that came after me. Because um, if you look at the, 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 the transition uh, of the receiver position before me and after me, they started to become bigger, faster, and stronger. Uh, you think of guys like uh, Calvin Johnson, they called him Megatron. You think of uh, uh, Julio Jones. You know, these are big body uh, type of receivers that possess, you know, not only just, uh, you know, the hands and catch radius, um, but when you think about the speed and the power of these guys, that, I think that's something that people marveled at, marveled at as they saw the progression um, each and every year. Um, that I played in the National Football League. And I think after my third year in the league, after I made the, the catch against the Green Bay Packers, I think that instilled uh, a lot of confidence in myself that I could play and I could play on a big stage. Um, it didn't it didn't start out particularly well, but that's where the cliche, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I realized as I started to uh, really score touchdowns and my touchdown celebrations became a topic of discussion. Um, you know, I thought it was something positive, but when commentators and analysts started to uh, really, really create this narrative that I was being selfish or I was taken, uh, taken away from the team concept or, you know, making it all about me or becoming selfish, um, honestly, I, I didn't take that very well. Um, I didn't think that that's what I was doing. Um, and so for me, I could have allowed that outside noise or that criticism uh, manifest and really, um, really deter me from really doing what I really wanted to do and be productive on the football field. If I would have allowed that to really um, eat at me um, and, and, and not 
allow myself to be who I was in the football field, then it could have been disastrous. It could have been like pretty much, it could have made or break, you know, who I was uh, as a talent um, and could have made or break really my career. But I think it all, like I said, it all stemmed from, you know, how I was raised and my grandmother and the things that she taught me. Um, she basically taught you, yeah, people, when you start to become successful, um, they're gonna people, you're not gonna be 100% liked by everyone. And so I didn't, there was so, there's so many layers and so many elements of being a professional athlete and, and being in that sport. Um, you're gonna be subjected to criticism, you know, whether you do good or bad, and people are gonna talk about you, uh, good, bad, or what have you, but you have to be strong, uh, strong-willed, and I think that's who and how I was. And I think a lot of that, like I said, stemmed from my, the, the upbringing of my grandmother. Um, but at the end of the day, I think an athlete, again, to get to where you want to be and the process in which it takes to get there, you have to be addicted to bettering yourself. You literally, you have to be, you have to be addicted to bettering yourself. And that's what I became. I became addicted to the process of, of the success that stemmed from my off-season workouts. Once I got a personal trainer after my third year, um, it was very different in my approach and things that I had ever done since high school and college. Um, but I was receptive to that because I hired him as as my personal trainer. Um, you know, we had that dialogue. We sat down and we talked about what I wanted to accomplish, not only just from a football standpoint um, at that point in time going into my fourth year, but what did I what did I want to accomplish with my workouts? What did I want to get better at? What did I from a physical standpoint? How did I want to get better? Um, he asked me, um, you know, assess your body. What do you what do you want? What do you want to get out of these workouts? And so for me, I was a skinny, scrawny kid. Yeah, I had I was yeah six three frame uh, coming out of college. And at this time, you know, three third three years into the league, yeah, I was physically imposing, but I wasn't satisfied at where I was at that point um, in my third year going into my fourth year. Yeah, I had come off one of the biggest game, made one of the biggest plays, catches um, in my career. Um, at that time, you know, considered one of the biggest catches, I guess, uh, monumental uh, type of uh, catches in 49er history after the after the catch, you know, by, by Dwight Clark. And my catch was, you know, kind of pegged, I kind of pegged it myself as the catch too, uh, considering, you know, wild card game, um, you know, uh, really a rivalry over the years between San Francisco, Green Bay Packers, um, two Hall of Fame quarterbacks now in Brett Favre, Steve Young. Um, and so, like I said, I played in a, in a very monumental uh, game where the stakes were high, wild card game. It, the game honestly went down almost down to the last seconds. Um, so that's something, again, like I said, uh, that, that catapulted me to be where I am today.